The Minneapolis St. Paul region is renowned for its green space. According to CNN, Minneapolis and St. Paul tied for first place in the Trust for Public Lands Urban Park System rankings. The crown jewel of the two cities' park systems is the Grand Rounds, a 50-mile stretch of continuous parkland and trails that are designated a National Scenic Byway. If you're in decent shape, you can bike the entire length in a single day, or save yourself the excursion and travel directly to the major highlights. Take a swim at Cedar Lake. Cedar Lake is the northernmost body of water in Minneapolis' chain of lakes, a collection of urban lakes linked by contiguous wetlands and enveloped by grand rounds. The lake is nearly surrounded by Cedar Lake Park, a mostly wooded area with great trails and viewpoints. On warm days, lay out or swim at the beach near the intersection of Berman Road and Cedar Lake Avenue. See the view at Lake of the Isles. Favored by local athletes, business people, and celebrities, Lake of the Isles is the ritziest of Minneapolis lakes. On winter weekends, pickup pond hockey is a regular occurrence here. The southwest side of the lake offers great skyline views in all seasons, so don't forget your camera. Paddle through Lake Calhoun. Lake Calhoun is home to Minneapolis' biggest and busiest municipal beach. On summer weekends, come early to ensure a spot on the sand. If you want to explore the lake and the rest of the chain of lakes by boat, visit Wheel Fun Rentals on Lake's northeast shore. Wheel Fun rents out kayaks, stand-up paddleboards, and canoes with summer rates starting about $13 an hour. Once you've had your fill of the water, walk over to the hip Uptown District for a drink or light meal. Entertain yourself with concerts at the Lake Harriet. Lake Harriet is just south of Lake Calhoun, with a large wooded area connecting the two. There's a small beach, extensive grassy shoreline, and a second Wheel Fund Rentals outpost on the northwest shore. The adjacent Lake Harriet Band Show features concerts and performances most summer evenings and weekend afternoons. On the northeast shore, check out Lindale Park, a manicured parcel with a well-kept rose garden and other cultivated area. Explore Lake Nokomis. A few miles southeast of Lake Harriet, along Minnehaha Parkway and beautiful Minnehaha Creek lies Lake Nokomis. Lake Nokomis is entirely surrounded by Lake Nokomis Park, which features a moderately sized beach and a third wheel fun rental hub. Spend some time walking or biking around the lake, hit the beach, and then head across Minnehaha to Grand Ole Creamery, which features 200 ice cream flavors in double-sized cones starting at about $4. Walk, bike, and ski at Theodore Worth Park. Known as Worth Park for short, Minneapolis' largest park occupies a decent chunk of the city's northwest border. It boasts several small, but picturesque lakes, extensive wetlands, a 27-hole golf course, and miles of wooded walking, biking, and Nordic skiing trails. The ridge on the park's west side is one of the highest points in the city and offers stunning, near-panoramic views. Camp at Minnehaha Falls and Park. Another couple miles down Minnehaha Creek is Minnehaha Park one of the Twin Cities' largest urban parks. The park itself is huge, with a nice mix of manicured areas and natural spaces. The highlight is Minnehaha Falls, a 50-foot plunge that takes Minnehaha Creek down to the level of the nearby Mississippi River. Though it slows to a trickle in late summer, the falls are often torrential in spring, and most years find it completely frozen by late December. Stroll through West River Parkway. West River Parkway runs from the north side of Minnehaha Park through the downtown Minneapolis to the North Loop neighborhood. It features separate walking and biking paths plus two narrow driving lanes. West River Parkway never strays more than a few hundred feet from the Mississippi River, 
affording stunning views of the waterway on one side and grand early 20th century mansions on the other. Have a glance at history at Sweet Hollow. Located on St. Paul's east side, Sweet Hollow is a part park and part historic preserve. Though most of its original structures are gone, the area was a wretched, densely populated slum for Scandinavian and Northern European immigrants during the 19th century. Never electrified or connected to St. Paul's plumbing system, the neighborhood was abandoned sometime after 1950. Know more about American history at Fort Snelling. Situated on a high bluff at the strategic intersection of the Mississippi and the Minnesota rivers, Fort Snelling is the oldest surviving European settlement in the Twin Cities region. Many original structures, including soldiers' quarters and fortification, remain intact, though they're outnumbered by post-Civil War construction. Don't miss the reenactments and drills held most mornings and afternoons. The facility's hours may be truncated or it may be closed entirely for long stretches during the cold season. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and leave us a comment. Let us know which one of these you think you'll be doing on your next visit to Minnesota.